We're celebrating the 12th Sunday. Today's Mass is offered for the soul of Rod Evans. The Lord is the strength of His people, a saving refuge for the one who is anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless our heritage. Govern now and forever. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have rightly said, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. In honor and peace to the people of the Lord. We praise you. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah cried out, I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Lord, in your steadfast love, answer me. Lord, in your steadfast love, answer me. It is for your sake that I have borne reproach, that shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. It is zeal for your house that has consumed me, and the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Lord, in your steadfast love. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord. 
at an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me. With your steadfast help, rescue me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Lord, in your spirit. Let the oppressed see it and be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his own that are in bonds. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves in them. Lord, Lord, Lord. A, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, so death spread to all people, because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgressions of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift and the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. The word of the Lord. testify on my behalf, says the Lord, and you also are to testify. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, Fear no one, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before humans, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before humans, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to begin by a little advertisement. I'd like you to look at all the flowers in church today. We have an amazing display. And I want to thank our ladies who are doing them, especially Marina and Lorette, and uh, also Lou Watrich was doing these. And I want to uh, say how amazing this display is. I think there are nine bouquets, all fresh flowers. So my point is, we need your flowers. Please keep bringing them on the Saturday mornings because we really enjoy it and it looks great. So thank you, ladies, and thank you, uh, gardeners, because it's the time of year when we need to see this uh, beautiful expression of creation. This is a prayer from Thomas Merton, uh, who was a very famous monk, uh, a Trappist monk from the U.S. and a great writer of uh, Catholic devotion. 
and it says, I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. I know that you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore I trust you always. I will not fear, for you are with me, and you never leave me to face my perils alone. So a beautiful poem, especially of course it is talking about fear. And we hear Jesus in our Gospel of today uh, repeat three times in a fairly short Gospel the fact that we should not fear. We begin as he speaks to the Apostles, fear no one. The disciples of course are in this phase of being formed being prepared, and that is the whole of chapter 10. They're being told how they will have to go out, they will have to go out in pairs to the towns and villages, but they must not fear. So they are being told, of course, how they will have to learn to cope with fear and to surrender their fear to God. And we can all relate. There are so many more things to be afraid of in the COVID-19 experience. One of the things, of course, is one's own self, because the strange thing, we don't know, am I a bearer of the virus? So I was visiting in my week away a cousin, 84 years of age, visiting her and her husband. So I didn't know if I should even go but they said, no, it's okay, you can come. And we tried to practice our distancing and all of that. But every little moment in a store or any other life experience, we seem to be breaking a rule. I was in the new grocery store last night in town and I all of a sudden realized halfway down the aisle, I was going against the arrow direction. You're only allowed to go in one direction in that aisle. So you're committing a sin, you're breaking um, some rule, no matter what you do. So we're learning, each of us, to be very patient with ourselves, but also to deal with fear. Uh, the fear, of course, of my neighbor. How many people look at us like we are Darth Vader. I am bringing the virus to you by being my buggy, my shopping buggy is too close to yours. This is how we did. So we can relate even to Jeremiah the prophet. When the people around Jeremiah, they say, terror is all around. That seems to be our experience. Back in 1933, there was a new U.S. President, Franklin Roosevelt. And he uttered some famous words that kind of echo what our Lord is talking about in the Gospel. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. As he so rightly says, it can be that the cause of some of our fears are unnecessary. They are unnecessary fears. But we know it is our experience, especially nowadays, fear is a daily experience. The fears arise easily, but what is the problem with fear? As we know, even we could say the reason Jesus is warning the disciples, fear will thwart or shut down action. I'm not going to do anything because I'm just too afraid. So this is uh, not the way for the disciples in their time of formation. They are to be men of action. They're going to look for more villages and go on and never give up the cause to evangelize. And we ask ourselves how much good in the world is not done because fear can hold us back. From a natural point of view, we know the disciples, they had a lot to fear, like Jeremiah the prophet of our first reading. They would be like him, rejected and humiliated, imprisoned, eventually killed. 
But what they had to learn, though, like the prayer of uh, Thomas Merton said, that Jesus could even overcome their legitimate fears. Yes, we have legitimate fears, but God is so powerful that his power is greater than our fear. He provides strength and courage that we cannot lay claim to by human strength alone. You think of somebody like Mother Teresa, she had to battle governments in communist countries and send her sisters, and she was dauntless. She was just undeterred. Uh, where did this courage come from? But we also know um, that this is the will of the Lord that we live our discipleship not uh, according to fear. Um, and, but we know that Jesus will give his strength and his help to those who want him in their life, to those who open their heart up to him. One commentator on the Gospel today, he said, all that we have to do is we just have to trust. That's as a person of faith, we just have to entrust ourselves to God. Um, and he looks after the rest. Father Cantona Mesa, who's the preacher in the papal household, he said, only someone who knows fear knows what courage is. So it means we have experienced the normal reasons for fear, for danger, for sickness, whatever, but then God gives us this amazing courage. And it means we have abandoned ourselves to Him and He is with us. Jeremiah started out very fearful. He said, Don't call me, Lord. I'm too young. I'm too inexperienced. I cannot speak. Don't make me your prophet. But he slowly came to understand that God was with him in the trials that he went through. As he says today, he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Today, it is an appropriate day for us to think of this along these lines of God delivering us from fear, because it is a pro-life Sunday in our Archdiocese, and it's also Father's Day. We are thinking of the gift of life through our fathers, be they deceased or alive. And we're thinking of life as something very precious. As we know in the world it is something cheap and worthless to be thrown out. The advance of euthanasia, now even a child can ask for euthanasia, is wild. It's beyond our imagination. I was talking to a lady in our church and her son-in-law is severely depressed, so he thinks he should just have his life terminated due to depression. Does that mean he will be uh, having uh, assisted suicide? In some countries, yes, and we are dangerously on the close, uh, the close edge of that happening here. So we are in a very dangerous space with euthanasia and, of course, the taking of life in the womb, the redefining of marriage, all of this is an undermining of the family. So these are challenging times. We have to remember what Jesus and what FDR said about fear. We must not give in to it. We do, must not let fear prevent us from doing what we need to do to make a difference in the world. We end with two thoughts in our Gospel, at the end of our Gospel. One is concerning the value of our own life, and then the life of every other human being. And Jesus says, Do not be afraid, you are of more value than many sparrows. How many people in this age do not have self-love? How many people do not love themselves as God would want them to? Maybe that's all of us. But that's not what Jesus says. The Gospel says we are to love ourselves as a unique uh, creation of God, valuable to Him, with an irrepeatable value. Secondly, we remember our allegiance, that we acknowledge who the Lord is, and in that allegiance, connecting our heart with God, we remember who it is that we belong to. 
to whom we will one day give an account of our gifts. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Today we ask the Lord, whatever may cause us fear or anxiety, that it may be overcome by the trust we owe to God. May fear give way to action on our hearts, especially as we pledge our hearts to defend life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine of the offering, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, and become our spiritual. Blessed God.
reconciliation and praise, grant and cleanse by its action that we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Our Father, our Lord, 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 our Lord,
by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We wait the blessed moment for the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am the Lord.
the eyes of all, look to you, Lord, and you give them their food in due seasons. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body, precious blood of your Son, we ask of your, of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ, our Lord. Virgin. Amen.